Good morning. Welcome to the last day of Chapter 5. Okay, we are on decontamination. We are on the sanitation part of the chapter. So, I have my notes here. Um, the first thing is the definition. Okay, this, the definition of decontamination is the removal of blood or other potentially infectious materials on an item's surface and the removal of visible debris or residue such as dust, hair, and skin. Okay, there are two methods that we use. Uh, the first method is what we actually do, which is wash with soap and warm water, scrub, scrub with a clean nail brush, um, and then we use a, a use or use a um, ultrasonic unit or use a cleaning solvent. Okay. Um, the next step for us, okay, so we do the, the wash it with soap and warm water with a, a nail brush or some kind of brush to clean everything off of it. So that is cleaning part of it, okay. Disinfect, okay, the disinfectant, the, we use barbicide at our school. Um, there are other disinfectants that you can use, just uh, look into it and see what works for you. Just know that disinfectant is not for use on human hair, skin, or nails. So, um, not a good thing to do. Okay, do what I say, not what I do. Use those baskets to lift your stuff up out of there and get it rinsed off rather than just grabbing it with your hands. Okay, disinfecting eliminates most organisms. Not all, but most. Okay, you need to know that. Um, it has to be EPA registered. We talked about this in one of the earlier ones. I think the very first one. The EPA registers every disinfectant sold and used in the United States. If it is not, if it doesn't have an EPA number on it, it's not legal to use in the United States. Must be bactericidal, fungicidal, and virucidal. Okay, so that is what what we do. Okay, we clean it and then we disinfect it. Um, there is a second method, which is sterilizing, which really is not, um, it's, it's really hard to do in the salon, um, but some salons still do it. Um, sterilizing completely destroys all microbial life, including the spores. Okay, remember our disinfectant can't kill the spores because they have that coating on the outside. Okay, but sterilizing can kill those spores. Um, there is dry heat, which is absolutely not recommended, um, and pressurized steam. You use an autoclave, and you have to have a log kept of the usage, testing, and maintenance of that autoclave. And the CDC requires weekly testing of that autoclave. That's why it is just really not very good for us to try and use. Um, so, just know the way we do it, and there is the sterilizing way to do it. Okay, choosing a disinfectant, right? Follow manufacturer's directions, okay? It's the, the right on the bottles or on the wipes container. Um, so just follow the directions. Um, mixing ratios and contact time is very important. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that just dump. Okay, um, until it's the right color. And honestly, that is the state board inspector knows what color it should be. So she is looking at that. She's not going to pull a sample out and test it and make sure. But she knows what color it's supposed to be. She knows if it's too light or if it's too dark. So make sure that you are following the manufacturer's directions because having it mixed properly and having the proper amount of contact time, 10 minutes, Okay, for the barbicide that we use is 10 minutes. It needs to be completely submerged for that 10 minutes. Otherwise, it just is worthless. Okay. Um, the EPA has recently approved a new disinfectant called Accelerated Hydrogen Peroxide, or AHP. It only has to be changed every 14 days, where our barbicide is to be changed daily. Okay. Um, it comes in a spray, immersion, and wipes. Okay, proper use. It has to be completely submerged. 
Um, you either need to use a spray or um, a dip for your clippers. You still have to have that same amount of contact time. So if you're if you're dipping, you need to have that same amount. You need to dip for 10 minutes. Okay, that's where the wipes and um, the sprays come in really handy. Um, the timing, again, is very important. Follow the manufacturer's directions and um, change it as indicated by the manufacturer. Um, different types. Alrighty, I have a handout here that I will give you when we get back to the school. I'm going to put it right up here. I don't know if you can see it very good. Um, this is actually from my former teacher. So it's got things marked on there that maybe you don't need so much. I don't know how well you can see this. I don't know if you can pause this and get what all this is. So just know that I will give you a copy of this when we get back into the classroom. All right. Um, okay, so types. Quats is usually immersed for 10 minutes. Um, comes in a liquid or a tablet form. That's right on the sheet here, okay? Liquid or tablet form. The strength is one to 1,000. Okay, according to this, it says immerse for 20 or more minutes. Okay, on quads. Um, so, again, that came from a former teacher. There's no date on that. Um, just know that it's usually 10 minutes now. Um, and it may, quads stands for quaternary ammonium compounds. This is all in your book, guys. And it may contain anti-rust ingredients. So you can put your shears in there. All right, um, metal implements in there, you know, because we get real nervous about putting metal things in liquid. So um, make sure that whatever you're using as your disinfectant has um, anti-rust, okay? And quats may contain that. Okay, phenolics. These are heavy duty, okay? Um, they are powerful tuberculocidal disinfectant very high pH, very high pH, um, very damaging to skin and eyes. You do not want to put your hands in this. You don't want to get this splashed in your eyes. It is going to damage plastic and rubber. Okay, it can discolor things. Um, it can kind of melt them down. It is very, very strong. Um, if, you know, if you're using a phenolic to do any disinfecting, make sure that you have your contact time write down, set a timer, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, it can cause metals to rust. It is a carcinogen, okay? It can cause cancer. These are phenolics. Do not use a phenolic disinfectant in a pedicure tub. No, 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 because it is going to eat the things away and ruin your tubs. Okay, bleach, which is also on here, okay? Household bleach is on here someone. Sodium hypochlorite, okay, is household bleach. It is a liquid. 10% uh, solution, okay, immersed for 10 or more minutes. Um, I Actually, the second salon I worked at, that's what our salon owner used. We did not use barbicide. We used bleach. Um, and mind you, this was, you know, 1982, 83, somewhere around there. So it's been a long time ago but we used bleach in the salon to clean everything. Um, it does have to be changed every 24 hours, so every day. Using too much of it, okay, too much strength, you know, if you're just going to dump a gallon of straight bleach in and throw your stuff in there, um, not a good plan. It's going to damage anything that's metal. And it's also a lung irritant, so before you use bleach, you need to make sure that there is no one around that has an issue with it. Okay. Um, now to safety. SDS. Okay. There is a whole, there's 16 steps on your SDS or 16 items on your SDS sheet. Um, normally in the classroom, I would 
have the our SDS sheets there so you can see what they look like and we will when we get back to school look at those um, there's quite a bit of stuff we're going to be doing when we get back to school anyway um, but as far as safety goes you need to have those SDS sheets that is law you have to have those SDS sheets um, and know how to read them know what to do because if something happens you know you get perm solution in somebody's eye you need to know what to do to take care of that so that you don't cause them any harm or damage um, gloves and safety glasses you know we all use gloves we aren't so great about the safety glasses sometimes um, you want to avoid skin contact with these disinfectants with all of them even the barbicide don't stick your hands in there do what I say not what I do okay um, make sure that you're putting the water in first Okay, you add the disinfectant to the water, not the other way around. Keep it in a safe place. Um, if you're in a salon, I used to keep mine actually on the floor in our, back, in our back room. We just have a very small little back room. And then I had kids. We didn't have a door on it. And I had kids that would run in there. So it went up on a higher shelf. Okay. It needs to be in a place that's safe. It's not going to get dumped. It's, you know, a kid's not going to accidentally fall in it or whatever. So keep it in a safe place. Um, carefully measure using those manufacturer's directions. And um, you, it, the state of Missouri, I'm not sure if this is nationwide, but you have to have it marked. Okay? You have to have, you know, if, if so I'm using barbicide. I have to use have a barbicide container. It has to say barbicide on it. Okay. What I've done is I downloaded a, a little like almost like a sticker to stick on. Okay. And I have done that on some of mine. Um, but you know, with the school, we have the the tote kind of things that came from the barbicide. So, but they have to be marked. Um, Exposure incident, contact with broken skin, blood, and body fluids. Um, wow, I probably should have looked at that a little better. Um, an exposure incident, um, this is a weird place to put this. I guess it's kind of under safety, but not really. Um, that is the last thing we do when, with blood exposure. Okay. Um, so if you are exposed to anything, not so much, it, I mean, blood, but broken skin and, and body fluids, um, you need to know how to, you know, use those SDS sheets and know how to take care of that. Okay, the last thing for today is tools. Okay, we have a lot of different tools that we use in the salon. Um, we have reusable tools, which are called multi-use they can be cleaned and disinfected. They have a hard, non-porous surface. Okay, your combs, any, anything that's metal, basically, anything that it's not going to suck up the water, right? Non-porous uh, shears, nippers, combs, things like that. Single use are your disposables, which would be a pumice stone, which I do know that you can get disinfectable pumice stones now, and if you use those. You need to keep the box because it doesn't say it on the actual stone, but it says it on the box. So that if state board ever comes in, because those have always been illegal for us, but now that they can be disinfected, we can actually use them. So make sure that you keep that box. Um, but single use or disposables cannot be cleaned and disinfected. Okay, your cotton, cotton balls, cotton swabs, your if you're using a, um, a popsicle stick as your spatulas, like we do for our Vaseline for our perms, so and our relaxers and all that, we use a spatula to get that out of there. That's disposable. That is not something that you clean and reuse. Okay. If you have the plastic spatula, yes, you that can be disinfected. But anything that is not, um, you can't dis you can't submerge it okay neck strips what's going to happen you know you know what happens when a neck strip gets wet okay you can't disinfect those 
um, your wooden pushers for your manicures and pedicures. Those can't be disinfected. That's why we break them and throw them away along with our emery boards, right? We break them and throw them away. Okay. There are a few porous items that can be reused. Your towels. Obviously, you're not going to throw your towels away. They are porous. They are going to soak up the water. That's what they're meant to do. But what would you guys do if I didn't have to wipe my eyes? Anyway, um, towels, your linens, so that the sheets that we put on the facial beds, those can be you know washed and reused. And there are some files and some buffers that are disinfectable. So make sure that you know you know which ones are which and. Disinfect the ones that you can and the ones that you can't have to go in the trash. Okay, but there are a few things that, that are porous that can be used. Okay, log book. I did not, oh, okay, because I put it under tools. Um, a log book, this is what, going back to the sterilizing. It is not required by Missouri law. So you can read about it in your book, but Missouri state law does not require a log book right now. Your electrical appliances, okay? You do need to wipe those down with your barbicide or a, an EPA registered disinfectant on the handles where you put your hands, okay? Anything that you touch needs to be disinfected. I think we're all getting really good at that right now, um, having a lot of practice. So, and again, follow the manufacturer's directions for both the appliance and the disinfectant your clippers, your trimmers, things that you can't submerge but you need to be able to clean them, right, or to disinfect them. So those are the main things, your, your clippers, your trimmers, your, your blow dryers, your curling irons, your flat irons. Everywhere that you put your hands needs to be disinfected. Um, that is one of the reasons that I absolutely love the barbicide wipes. It's so much easier than having to spray them down and try and keep them clean for, you know, ten, or keep them damp for 10 minutes. The wipes have a two minute contact time. Okay, just a couple of reminders. A sanitizer is only a cleaner. Okay, it is not a disinfectant. A sanitizer is not a disinfectant. Okay, a lot of us, you run into a lot of us older hairdressers and we are going to use those words interchangeably because when we were taught those words were used interchangeably. So, but just know that a sanitizer is not a disinfectant, it is only a cleaner. Liquid soap does not need to be antibacterial to work. It is the motion, it's the, the mechanical, the scrubbing of your hands, which you should be doing for 20 seconds, okay, 20 seconds minimum, you should be doing um, under warm water, okay? Do not use extremely hot water to wash your hands. All that's going to do is cause damage to your skin and make you more susceptible for those germs to get into your hands. So you want to use warm water but not hot. And your liquid soap does not have to be antibacterial. It is more the motion of rubbing and getting those things, getting those germs off your hands and then getting them rinsed well and dried, you know, with a clean towel. So that is the end of chapter five, and I will be starting chapter six next week. Thank you.